Hello, and welcome to the Moms Who Know podcast. I'm your host, Chanel Nielsen, and I'm excited about our guest today, Shelly Solberg. How are you, Shelly? I'm great. How are you, Chanel? Good. Shelly Solberg is the creator of Let's Play Music, and Let's Play Music is so fun. Um, my son, my fourth child, was able to do the program for a couple years, and I just thought it was so great. And so for people who aren't familiar with Let's Play Music, will you just tell us a little bit of background, how it started, and a little bit about what Let's Play Music is? Sure. So I'll just go back in time about 30 years and talk about when I was in college. Um, I earned my degree in music education. And um, as I sat in those classes and learned about the way children should learn, the optimal way that children should learn um, anything, but particularly how they should learn music, um, I just found myself saying, yeah, this is the best way. What curriculum does this exist in? How can children access this? Who teaches this way? And my professors always said, well, there's not really a method. There's this person and this person. And at that moment, I decided I'm going to create a curriculum that does this at some point. Um, that went on the back burner until I um, started having my own children. And once my oldest was three years old, um, I thought, oh, it's time to do this. She is the age. I had her in infant and toddler music classes. But it was time for me to get those old college ideas out and create this curriculum. So um, that's exactly what I did. I put I put my experience and the research of fantastic educators and musicians to paper and um, just created a three year program that teaches piano and singing and theory in a very fun, recreational, enjoyable environment. Um, and the ages are basically from eight, uh, four to eight. Kids start when they're four or five, and um, we are learning about staff reading and harmony, and in the second and third year, they play the piano. So um, it really was done because my daughter was ready for it, and I wanted her to learn music in the best way. Um, my five children have all now been through it. My baby is 14, and um, they've all, they're all fantastic musicians, and I'm, I'm thrilled that Let's Play Music has been able to um, help so many really, really learn music in a way that they love it. That is so great. I love it that you developed it for your own family, because I think there's something really powerful there that when, when you see that need and you're able to see what needs to happen, it all comes together, you know, in a way that is really going to help and be beneficial to other parents. Now, um, Tell us why you came up with the name Let's Play Music, and that'll kind of get into a little bit of your methodologies and how you how you incorporate play with music. Right. So it was really important that play be the foundation for this curriculum, um, because honestly, that is the way children learn. Um, I love Mr. Rogers quote where he says play is children's work. I don't know if you've seen him um, seen that quote by him, but it's so true. The way children work, the way children learn is through play. Now, you know, th then we sort of have to define, well, what is play? Um, play is recreation. It's enjoyment. It's laughter. It's silliness. It's make-believe. Um, it's using the whole body and the, all of the senses um, in just a very natural, enjoyable experience for the child, right? It usually involves peers. It doesn't have to, but it often, um, play often involves peers for children. So. Um, if you're going to put play into a music curriculum, then uh, you have to have peers. So Let's Play Music is taught in small groups of six to seven kids per class. Um, we tell lots of stories. We're silly. We're imaginative. Uh, we play games. We discover. We laugh. Um, and we use the whole body in all of these experiences so that we're jumping and we're running and we are um, using our hands in lots of actions, lots of movement. And all of this reinforces whatever concept we're learning, but it also speaks to the child's need to move and to play and to feel active in their own body. Um, so it's just, it's truly so fun. I can't even, I, we have videos on our website because people can't even imagine what classes look like until they see them. And they're just, it is so fun. And the parents come and they say, this was an amazing party. And then we remind them, <laughs> Every single element of play that you saw was intentional. It was teaching your child something. 
Um, but yeah. it, it's just, it's really, really fun. So I remember the first time that I saw this in action, I saw a sample class that a local teacher did. And one of the things that really stood out to me was a thing that I know that you do regularly is puppet shows. And in this puppet show, she played a a classical music piece and then each instrument and each, well, maybe it's not even instrument, each part of the music had a puppet that went with it. And my son, who would have been about three or four at the time, was able to pick out these phrases in the music and the the instruments, and he could figure out better than I could which puppet went next. And I was just amazed. It was so cool to see. And that little part of it was what really got me excited because um, he, this particular son, is very musical. And then to to play into that ability that children have to want to play and have fun and yet to be educating him musically is just kind of magical. I love that part of it. Right. Doesn't it feel that way? And I totally agree because to your son, he thought it was a play. It was play. It was a puppet show. Yeah. You recognized it as classical music study and ear training, but um, he just thought it was a puppet show. So We really are sneaky and let's play music. The kids think they're playing (laughs) and we know they're learning. And the truth is they're doing both. Yes. And like you said, I mean, that really is how children learn is by putting in that element of play. They're really able to learn so much from that. And it's very powerful. So let's talk a little bit about music. Obviously, you are a music education major and music was very important to you. But why do you think music in general is important for kids to learn? Well, it's really exciting, the research that has come out in the last 30 to 40 years, because um, it used to be a theory. It was just a hypothesis that early music education, and when I say early, I mean in the stages where the brain is still forming. So between the ages of zero and 12 is where uh, early music music education is particularly formative. Um, So the jury was kind of still out. Even when I was in college, they were saying, it is supposed that music does this. It is supposed that uh, exposure to this type of music will cause this brain function. And now the jury's in. It's known. The research has proven it. And and it's everywhere. I think it's, it's, pretty common knowledge um, that people understand what music does for the brain. There's, um, you know, there's just the actual physiological brain development, that there is larger growth in the neural activity of musicians, and particularly those that began their music training. Um, Honestly, it's supposed to be as early as possible. It's not a myth. It's not a hoax that you should play Mozart to your newborn or to your to your fetus. <laughs> it really is true that it, it absolutely uh, spurs grown uh, brain development. So there's that. And then, um, then there's all of the other wonderful enrichment that goes along with that. Uh, language and literacy development are more um, acute in musicians, kids that studied any kind of music at all. They're able to make sense of language and speech parts more easily. And then they're also able to actually read and put words and phonemes together as they learn to read. Um, The spatial temporal skills are more heightened in uh, kids who have learned music. So um, that is the ability to visualize elements and see how those relationships would fit together. So this is helpful in math. It's in um, architecture, engineering, computer programming. It, um, these spatial temporal skills are, are, really, really keen for today's world. And music, early music is the way they're they're developed. Um, There's increased IQ and test scores. Uh, The parts that I love particularly are the social skills and cooperation. I love that um, kids are taught to take turns, to play their part, to stay on beat with an ensemble, that they have to play on the beat with their peers. It's a wonderful sense of community and a sense of belonging to something larger than yourself that really develops the individual. Um, and then there's, there's the fine motor skills, you know, playing any instrument is going to develop uh, brain coordination and function. Um, 
and I, I could probably go on and on. This is this list is going to get long. I'll go. I'll be a little bit faster. But um, there's there's also emotional health and the ability to cope with emotions when a child has learned that music is an expressive uh, tool in their lives. They can express using music, and they also can uh, experience catharsis when um, music is played for them. And it really helps emotional healing and um, emotional recognition for children. Um, it boosts I love confidence. That. Yeah, isn't it? Seriously, there's there are so many great things about music. Um, yeah. it, it also helps them to be good listeners when they have to listen to something specifically and then mimic it back. Um, it helps. It actually helps their whole skill of listening. Um, it also just enriches their appetite for things that are sophisticated, the finer things in life. Um, but it, yet, it helps them to understand that these things are enjoyable as well. So uh, besides that, you get a musical kid. So that's that's just a bonus, right? <laughs> There's just so <laughs> much. Yeah, just uh, an amazing spectrum of how music enriches children, adults as well. But again, it's just particularly formative for uh, children below the age of 12 to be exposed to music education. That's so, there's just so much there. I'm oh. glad that you hit on all those points because... Yeah. I mean, okay. So listening to that, I'm thinking, well, of course we all want our kids to learn music, but we do full disclosure. Yeah. I have five kids and my oldest um, has done piano. And then my fourth has done let's play music and is now in piano. My fifth is one. So we'll, we'll get him in there. But my middle two boys actually have not, well, one played the saxophone for a bit, but um, they my especially my third child hasn't expressed very much interest in music. So when you have because hearing you, you're saying there's so many benefits. And I'm thinking, well, of course, we all want our kids, you know, to have these benefits. When you have a child who is not as interested in music, what what would you recommend for someone like that? That's a great question. Um, and when when I say music education, Formal lessons are one form of music education, but um, hopefully, I know that it's starting to wane in schools. Some places have gotten rid of it, but the public uh, the public school music programs are actually quite wonderful, um, and hopefully that they're getting some of that amazing play experience based music education in schools. Um, if that's not happening at all, you can certainly put music on in your home. Uh, really of any type, of any type, and move to it, enjoy it, talk about how it makes you feel, talk about the sounds that you're hearing, uh, talk about the fast and the slow and the happy and the sad and the fast and the, um, did I already say fast and slow? The, yes. the, <laughs> and the smooth and the high and the low and use that experience to help them, um, again, to listen to relate that music to their own experience, to their own um, emotions, to their own life, and to still awaken and enrich that um, musical part that still exists in them. It doesn't have to be formal music instruction. That still really is the best. That's where you're going to get the developed great brain matter and all of that. But there is so much benefit just in turning on great music. It can be blues. It can be jazz. It can be some pop. Um, country, but especially classical, and just talking about it, just saying, how does this make you feel? Comes more easily when the children are four, five, six, seven. Um, once they get older than that, they won't think it's as cool, of course. <laughs> but by then, you know, yeah. it's it's really great to get them into some kind of instrument. Playing any instrument is just amazingly beneficial. Okay. Well, I'm glad. I love that because for those of us who haven't put our kids in, um, definitely that's always an option. It's never too late, but I love that, that we can have some of these benefits and we can still introduce our children to music, even if it's not the time in our lives for whatever reason, or, or the child themselves, like my son is resistant to sure. wanting to to do the music. So that's those are some great tips. And I love it because I think music can and should be a part of all of our lives, whether it, you know, just to what extent we use it. So I'm I thank you for that. That's wonderful. Right. Um 
Now, Let's Play Music has a very interesting take on the role of parents. Um, now, with your classes, when the children are young, it's the first year of instruction is it every other time. It's been a while, so I can't remember. But every other class, the parents come and stay for the whole right. class. Um, talk to me a little bit about the role of parents in Let's Play Music specifically, and then in music education in general? Sure. So um, part of the very core of Let's Play Music is the belief or, you know, the, the research, I guess, that parents are the most influential teacher in a child's life. Uh, a teacher can be influential, but when a parent takes the role of a teacher, the influence is exponential. So we are actually instructing parents as they attend class every other week, as you said, we are instructing parents to become that teacher at home, um, partly because there is all, already an emotional bond with the parent. There's already trust and there's consistent exposure, obviously, to the parent um, the, and the type of uh, instruction that's needed to produce a really great musician or to really take advantage of all that Let's Play Music offers. There has to be ongoing, long-term, sustained exposure to the concepts and the skills that we introduce in class. So to have the parent very, very involved, um, that's really how we accomplish the purposes of Let's Play Music. That's why it's such a powerful program, because parents are an absolutely integral part of that educational process. Um, so yes, the parents come to class not only to learn how to be the teacher at home, but they also come to strengthen the emotional bond that exists with their child already and to expand it into a, um, into a, to add the musical element to that emotional bond. And I hope you remember in your classes when your teacher would have your child sit on your lap and rock, rock to the music. Um, your teacher would have your child um, listen to your heartbeat so that we could talk about the beat of music and how it keeps you alive. Um, we do lots of eye contact and partner activities um, just so the parent and child relationship is strengthened. Um, we purposefully cultivate relationships because we know that relationships bring enrichment to life and particularly the parent-child relationship. So there's emotional reasons there. Um, and then there are practical reasons too, where the, the parent becomes the teacher at home. Um, yeah. and, and go ahead. I was just going to say, I do have really great memories of doing Let's Play Music with my son. And um, one thing that I find especially helpful is, you know, when my other kids, whatever classes they're in, whether it's piano lessons or their math class at school, they come home and they, they're doing their homework and they're working on it. And they, they ask me for help. And I sometimes know how to help them. And sometimes I have no idea how to help them. But with Let's Play Music, one thing that I found very beneficial is I always knew how to help because I was there every right. other week and I, right. I knew what was going on. And so as a parent, that was very valuable to have learned it alongside my child. And like you you talked about, parents are the most influential, influential teachers. Well, then I was able to be an effective teacher also, instead right. of saying, well, let's ask Miss Leslie next time because I don't know what's going on. I did know what's going on. And that's very empowering as a parent. Right, right. It really is. And like you said, it helps you to be totally effective. Um, we've, we've been in business. I've been teaching for 20 years, um, but I didn't start teaching, training other teachers to teach for a while. But we, all along the way, we've had um, prospective parents say, you know, if you didn't make me come, you would, you would have a lot more people in your <laughs> program. It's really yeah. hard for parents to have to attend and your program would be way more successful if you would just, you know, eliminate that requirement that parents attend. And I'm glad I stuck to my guns early on because it really, like I said, it's a core element of what makes Let's Play Music effective. We would have a dilute version of what we have grown um, if we had not, you know, kept that requirement that parents attend because it it is what creates the wonderful results that Let's Play Music um, can brag about now. Um, because of the the power of the mom, it's it's just a wonderful thing to have an influential grown up in a child's life. 
Yes, I love that. So tell us a little, so, okay, parents are going and they're learning this music with their child. And I would say, even for people who aren't in specifically in Let's Play Music, we can still learn. Everyone can learn from that model of accompanying your child to their music lessons, learn right alongside with them and kind of figure it out so that you can help them. But talk to us a little about practice, because I think a lot of times we're not sure of our role um, when we are practicing, when we're listening to our child do their practice. Talk to me a little bit about what you recommend and how parents can most help their child in that situation. Yeah, that's a really, really great topic. And I think it's because I, I think moms and parents want to do a good job. They want their children to succeed. And they want to be a good mom. They want to be nurturing and they really, they want to do it the right way. And I think sometimes that can work against moms. Um, I think that we have expectations. We have goals in our mind. We have an understanding of why our child is doing what they're doing at that moment. And we very quickly want to attach it to the end goal. Um, And sometimes that can result in frustration because what the child is doing today isn't exactly what the child is going to be doing at the end of the week or at the end of the semester or at the end of, of piano in 10 years. And so we feel like as Let's Play Music teachers, um, we're constantly helping moms to slow down, enjoy the pace, enjoy the play, to take successes a little bit at a time, to see the everyday progress, even though it's minuscule. <laughs> But to just enjoy the fact that your child is sitting at the piano for 10 minutes, experimenting, playing, enjoying what they're seeing on the page, enjoying the sounds that are coming out of the instrument without saying, okay, okay, now, now you're not playing page three. Now get, now look at page three. Look at that first note. Now you got to focus here, honey, because you know, that, that element of practice will come. It happens. And we can speak to that a tiny bit just by maybe saying, hey, how does that first note on page three sound if you try that? (laughs) But it's more of an experiential discovery type tone rather than a you've got to accomplish this right now type tone. (laughs) So we're constantly um, helping our the parents in, uh, in our program work through playful experiential vocabulary so that we say, try this. I wonder what this would sound like. I wonder what would happen if you put this here or if you tried this, I wonder how this might sound. And I, I really feel like that is, um, again, I'm a mother of five and, and they all play piano and they all, you know, did homework and did chores and everything else that, <laughs> that kids don't want to do. And yet they, they have to, that's part of life is learning to do things you don't want to do. So as a parent, if we can motivate in creative and encouraging ways and use vocabulary that sounds more like, I wonder what would happen if you turned the broom around and used it to sweep this way. Do you think you might get more dirt? (laughs) Um, I just think that it's a really great parent skill to approach the things that our children need to learn to do, um, approach it in a playful way, a discovery way, an experiential way. And then we can say, oh, my goodness, look what you discovered. And it just it makes parenting so fun. (laughs) It makes it wonderful. That's so good. That's something that I needed to hear because I think that it's so easy to just want to to be worried about, especially when it comes to certain things that I you said kids don't want to do. I don't want to be doing. I don't want to be spending all this time on homework and chores and, you know, watching my kid do it in the slowest possible way. I just want it done. So it's easy as a parent to say, turn the broom around so that you can, you know, hurry up and sweep and get it done. But what a a great way to talk to your child, make it fun. And they love that. And I know one thing that our teacher encouraged when we did Let's Play Music was to sometimes as a parent, when the child wasn't interested in practicing, the parent could practice and the parent could go and say, how's this? Am I doing it right? And sometimes purposely do it wrong and let your child correct you. And oh, my son ate that up. He loved that. Isn't that a wonderful (laughs) parenting approach? Yeah. And you can do yes. that with the dishes too. I mean, my, yeah. my six-year-olds loved when I'd go over to the sink and start to try to wash dishes with no water on and say, how is this working for me? <laughs> they think it's hilarious. That's the playful element of discovery that children thrive on. 
Oh, that's so good. Okay. I'm so glad you're bringing that up. Um, in the little bit of time we have left, I wanted to make sure because there's a line on your website that I wanted to talk about. And you said on there that Let's Play Music changes lives. Can you tell us how it changes lives and how you've seen lives change through this program? It really does. It's such a wonderful thing to look back over the years and see the the uh, specific examples that have come up. But um, I will say that lives have literally been changed through emotional healing, through the uh, purposeful relationships that we cultivate, through the emotional bonding and the emotional um, recognition and healing. We've literally had people's lives change as they cope with death and divorce and loss. Um, Let's Play Music has been instrumental in changing those lives. Um, on a more global or, I guess, general level, lots of lives have been changed as um, in co- confidence is increased. When a child feels like they can do something, that changes a life. Um, and a really important part of the Let's Play Music classes are we celebrate our accomplishments and we embrace the process of learning. And that means mistakes are okay. And that means that trying is the very best thing we can do. And um, every activity is centered around trying, learning, and then trying again. So that in itself can change lives. And we really feel like we are changing lives just through the cultivation of confidence. Um, and the other best thing, the, the last thing I love about how I feel like Let's Play Music changes lives is um, that we are constantly teaching that things that are hard at first get easier with consistent practice. And that's a, that's a you know, global statement that can be applied to anything in life. So when a child really does learn that concept, oh, okay, this is hard right now, but if I keep trying it, it's going to get easier. What a beautiful concept. What a wonderful thing for a child to master and to truly learn and to apply it to his life over and over and over again. And, and we really feel like we are changing lives um, by helping children realize that they can do hard things and that those things get easier through their efforts. Those are awesome. I think that, yeah, you guys are spot on. Those really are ways that lives are changed through this program. Um, Before we go, I want you to let everyone know where they can get more information, both for parents, and then also if this has sparked a desire in anyone to become a teacher, tell us a little bit about um, that, where they can go and just kind of what that process would entail. Sure. And of course, teachers' lives are changed in this process as well. We have, we've trained over 400 teachers in the last 15 or so years. And most of our teachers are stay-at-home moms who are musicians themselves and who want to make some money staying at home. So we really do enrich and change lives in so many ways. We we offer this financial venue for people, for moms who want to um, increase their income and do something that they love. So it's, it's just a wonderful way to change your own life as you're changing others. Um, and our, our website is letsplaymusicsite.com, S-I-T-E at the end of Let's Play Music. It's pretty easy. If you just Google Let's Play Music, you'll find us. And then there's a Become a Teacher tab um, that you can click on and see how to become a teacher. There's also a Find a Teacher tab if you're interested in your children becoming students. And we hope you find this and that your life has changed because uh, we really do believe that Let's Play Music is, has the power to change lives. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Shelly, thank you so much for what you've done in creating this program. And thank you for sharing it with our listeners today. I think it's awesome. I'm so excited for people to learn about this. Great. So happy to share. Everyone, be sure to check that out. Let's play music site.com if you have more questions. And I will see you all next time on Moms Who Know. Subscribe to Moms Who Know so you never miss an episode and join the conversation on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Moms Who Know podcast.